in class, we defined the angle defect at a vertex of a polyhedron as the amount by which the sum of the angles at that vertex falls short of 2 pi or 360 degrees. For example, the angle defect at the vertex of a cube would be 90 degrees because 360 degrees minus 3 times the 90 degree angles that are in the angles of the faces around that vertex is equal to 90. We defined the total angle defect as the sum of all the angle defects at all the vertices. We also call this total curvature and use the letter K to represent it. We notice that the total angle defect was equal to 2 pi times the Euler characteristic of the surface, or if we want to use degrees, 360 times the Euler characteristic. This formula is known as Descartes' angle defect formula, and the equivalent version for smooth surfaces is called the gauss binet theorem. This video gives a proof of this relationship. Although the most standard version of Descartes' angle defect formula is written in terms of radians, I'm going to stick with degrees because most people are more comfortable working with degrees. So this is the formula that we're going to try to prove. I've drawn two sample polyhedra here. First one's a torus-shaped surface with lots of square faces, and the second one's a spherical surface that has a soccer ball pattern of pentagon and hexagon faces. I'll use these examples to make the proof more concrete, but the idea to the proof should apply to any polyhedral surface. This proof is an electric charge proof, so I'm going to start with a bucket of charge containing 360V minus 360E plus 360F units of charge, where V is the number of vertices of my polyhedron, E is the number of edges, and F is the number of faces. In other words, my bucket contains 360 times chi, the Euler number, units of charge. Next, I'm going to place 360 units of charge in the middle of each face of my polyhedron. So these are positive units of charge, so I'll put them in red. So my square torus polyhedron would look something like this. Of course, there are other 360s on various faces in the back and the bottom and the inside that we can't see. And my soccer ball should look something like this. Again, there are a lot of faces that we can't see. Next, I'm going to place negative 180 units of charge on each side of each edge. So I'll put negative 180 on this side of this edge, negative 180 on that side of that edge, negative 180 on this side of this edge, negative 180 on that side of that edge. That's looking kind of busy and I might have missed a few edges and of course there are also some negative 180s on, on the parts of the square torus that I can't see, but that should give you the idea. Negative 180 on each side of each edge. I could do the same thing for the soccer ball picture. I haven't gotten them all, but that should give you the idea. Finally, I want to distribute charge to vertices. I'm going to place a positive amount of charge in each angle at each vertex that is equal to the measure of that angle. So I'm kind of out of room to draw these all, but I'll, I'll give you the idea with an arrow. So in that angle, which is 90 degrees, I'll put 90 units of charge. In fact, I'll put 90 units of charge in every single angle of every single square. 
In this soccer ball example, I'm going to be putting 120 units of charge in each of the hexagon angles on each hexagon and 108 units of charge in each of the angles of each pentagon. So imagine that I went ahead and put an amount of charge at each angle of each vertex equal to the measure of that angle. And after that, I'm done distributing a charge. So notice that I started off with 360 times the Euler number units of charge in the bucket. And I ended up with some charge on the surface. Plus, I may have some charge left in the bucket. So I want to figure out how much charge is on the surface and how much charge is left in the bucket. To figure out the charge on the surface, that's equal to the sum of the charge in each face, added up over all the faces. For a face with n sides, the charge in that face is going to be 360 degrees for because of the positive charge I put in the middle of the face, minus 180 degrees times the number of edges, since I have a negative 180 degree inside the face at each edge. And then I have to add back a positive amount for the sum of the charges in all of the angles. But I happen to know that the sum of the angles in any polygon is 180 times n minus 2. In class, we prove this formula inductively by dividing up a polygon into a bunch of triangles, in fact, n minus 2 triangles. If I simplify this expression, this is 360 minus 180n plus 180n minus 180 times 2. 180 times 2 is just 360. And so you'll notice that these numbers exactly cancel out to 0. So that means that there's a net of 0 charge on the surface itself. So now let's see how much charge is left in the bucket. Remember that I started off with 360v minus 360e plus 360f. Well, I've distributed absolutely all of the 360f since I put 360 in the middle of each face and there are f faces. And I also distributed exactly all of the negative 360e since I put negative 180 on each side of each edge and there are e edges. In other words, I put negative 360 around each of the e edges. But I did not necessarily distribute all of the 360v. That's because I didn't always put a full 360 degrees around each of the vertexes. In fact, I only put an amount around a vertex equal to the sum of all the angles around that vertex. The charge that we distributed around a vertex may fall short of the 360 units we had available for that vertex, and it'll fall short by exactly the angle defect at that vertex. Of course, it's also possible that I had to put too much angle around a vertex. That would correspond to an angle excess or a negative angle defect. In that case, I would kind of have to borrow from the bucket and end up with a, a, some, some, some negative charge left in the bucket. In any case, what's left in the bucket of the 360 degrees available for each vertex is exactly the angle defect for that vertex. And the total amount of charge left in the bucket will be the total angle defect, what we're calling K. So look at what we figured out. We have that 360 times the Euler number, the amount of charge that we started off with in the bucket, is equal to the charge that we distributed on the surface, which is a net charge of zero, plus the charge left in the bucket, which is exactly the total angle defect or total curvature. We have proved that the total angle def defect is 360 
times the Euler number. This electric charge proof that we just went through works for any polyhedral surface without boundary. But there's a very similar proof that works for polyhedral surfaces with boundary. As long as we're careful to think about the angle defect at a boundary vertex as 180 degrees minus the sum of the angles at that vertex instead of 360 minus the sum. Your homework problem walks you through the proof for surfaces with boundary.